Howdy folks, Justin here. We're going to hop back into Versus Arena and pick up our Monk Run. We have uh, a lot of value creatures, right? Um, a couple Hive Defenders, a couple Aradon Paladins, Rajani Highwayman. Um, removal spells we could find were Piercing Javelin, Malefic Wreath, and uh, yeah, some... Fighters Guild Recruit, a Nimble Ally, two uh, Territorial Vipers, so pretty packed on removal. And to top off our curve, we have a couple Charis Reapers, Wild Beast Color, and a couple Tigers. And a Highland Lurcher. So, we are currently 2-1, and one, and we are going to see what we can do. Uh, I don't like willpower. You know, someone in the comments mentioned they don't like willpower in arena. I don't like willpower in arena that much either. But we had a monk quest, and uh, so we decided to do it. We're playing against assassin. I would argue the best combination in arena. No. Okay, so we have no elixir. We have a spell we can't cast until turn four on a nimble ally. Uh, we'll keep the nimble ally. Okay, so we made some poor decisions there with our mulligan. <laughs> Well, we got the Broom of Profiteer. Let's see what happens here. Crystal Tower Crafter. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, we'll play the Broom of Profiteer over... Actually, we want the opportunity to trade. So, presumably it gets hit with our removal spell. But, uh, that's okay. If it's Crushing Blow, we lay down Imperial Legionnaire, and we're happy about what just happened. He used an Elixir Charge. Um, Firebolt's not... Ideal. It gives him the opportunity to plank another play this turn if he wants to. Uh, so now we have to choose between Legionnaire and Ally. I think we go actually Ally because if it... I mean, you can make the argument that uh, Legionnaire, if he doesn't have a spell, is the better call because it's safer, more reliably able to trade, but I think Nimble Ally offers... Um, I'm sorry... The ability to trade if he doesn't cast a spell, along with the fact that it could be a 4-4 lethal, I think is worth the risk. Okay. So if he goes face and hits a prophecy for us, we're in great shape, but he didn't. That's interesting. Well, this is a pretty clear hive defender, if I ever saw one. Um, we're, n we're behind on life, so Golden Saint, not in an ideal position right now. What does our opponent have? Giant Bat. Okay. I really actually don't want him to slam in there because I want to be able to drop my Feasting Vulture for value, but... Maybe he watches the stream and knows we have the Vulture. Or um, watches the stream, I'm sorry. Watches the channel. And an Ashlander, okay. So... Well, we're not going to lay down two cards no matter what. I think we take advantage of the opportunity to throw down a big Feasting Vulture. This has some potential for letting us trigger Golden Saint next turn. Depends on what happens with this Ashlander and whether or not he can remove our Feasting Vulture. Soul Split. Solid. And this dies, I assume, because that card is <laughs> a pain in the ass. Schemer. Okay. Well, if we don't break a, if we don't get a prophecy here, we're in great shape with this uh, golden saint. Solid. All right. Uh, you know, we're only ahead by one life. We both have four cards in hand. At the end of this turn, my board might be in complete pieces but we shall see next turn we can drop a three drop and a four drop if we want to royal sage this is going to get lethal regenerate breakthrough lethal all right um well it does make my tiger sad i suppose but Okay, we're going to drop this feller over here, and this one over there, so that we can, if she decide, if my opponent, boom, beer, man, 
chooses not to kill that, we can try to kill it with that next turn. That's a super solid Reaper from my opponent. And another Paladin. Okay. Well, it looks like... What do we do here? That lethal is just painful. These random keyword cards should not be playable. Do we just race? <laughs> I kind of want to. Alright. Let's see what happens. Unanswered, you know, we have uh, lethal over here in this lane. We have a couple spells in our deck that could trigger the life gain on our Ardon Paladin. Uh huh. Now the Reaper would be great against us over here. Camelorn Sentinel, right? Tome of Alteration on the Sentinel. Okay. That's solid. That is even solider. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So one of the worst combination of colors, I would say. Uh, monk beating assassin. Pretty happy about the way that worked out. And we're making progress on that quest. So we're going to queue up <clears throat> for another one here. And see what happens. They just announced, uh, I just read um, the patch notes for the next patch. It looks like Manticora is getting changed to only be able to destroy creatures in the lane it's being played in. Which is a really, I really like this change. It's, it's subtle, it's nuanced, it's the sort of... Uh, balancing change that you would you know not expect honestly from the uh, kinds of changes we've seen in other companies games but it's the kind of change actually that I, I I feel I don't know I would say it gives me a lot of confidence going forward with uh, legends because it's very subtle but it's you know it's big enough to I think address some of the issues people had with both Manticore and control mage in general um, I'm eager to see how that affects next season. Um, especially given that I'm going to be playing Ramp Scout next season, as opposed to the more mid-range scout that I've been playing. We're going to start with the Profiteer. We're going to put them over here. Uh, there are no two-drop charge creatures in these colors, so it's not a huge deal. But Okay, so we have no answer to that in hand, but we will draw a card. Discounted Reaper in Arena feels good, man. So, still, we, we need to figure out what we're doing about this thing. Got a number of guards in our deck. You know, a uh, Hive Defender would be a solid draw that we could. Magicka Elixir out. If not, I think we have to play the, we have to Elixir out the Paladin and hope that we can connect with that because I don't want to lose the game to it. Yeah, as cute as this cat is to a daring cut first. And uh, worth pointing out too, uh, ninja person, Walker of Mundus, clearly a responsible uh, deck builder, <laughs> using Mundus stone that often, uh, is also playing Assassin, which I think we all know, or I, at least I personally believe, is the best um, best color combination in Arena. Thank you. So my opponent has a couple options here. They can trade with that, uh, but I think they're just going face. And then next turn, we actually have a couple options. We can Reaper, if that looks good. We can Viper to save our Elixir charge for maybe the following turn and drop a uh, Wild Beast color ahead of schedule. We can even Javelin something and then swing this in to regain some life, although not super keen on gaining life until I've had a few of my own runes broken and drawn some cards. You know, finding the right balance in this game between 
Remaining in control of the board and having your own runes broken so you have more resources is uh, one of the things that I think takes the longest to kind of get a feel for. And what is my opponent up to? It's Wednesday. Survivor is on tonight. Survivor is my favorite television show. <laughs> Um, you know, honestly, I like Black Sap Protector right here, and then I just swing in and I don't go face. I feel like that gives us quite a bit of control over the subsequent turns. Although, al alternatively, we Reaper. Yeah. Let's do this. We have ways to deal with this next turn in the form of Piercing Javelin and Territorial Viper. And like I was just saying, we'd like our own rune to be broken. So. Feels pretty good. Super Toad has come online. Hive Defender, also a solid answer to what my opponent's doing. I keep a spare blade in my boot as well. Alright, Ninja Person. What have you got? This was such a quick, deliberate play. I'm kind of surprised that the follow-up is taking a couple seconds. Wild Beast Caller. Are you going to bring me a Swamp Leviathan? In preparation for the Swamp Leviathans, I'll be dropping all over the place here when the up batch drops. Um... A lot of the time the right move would be to swing that in, but green is the color of Leaf Lurker and blue is the color of Firebolt, so didn't want to run into that. Um, cool. So this seems to be about the point in the games that we've won where we start to pivot, right? Like, we just have these massive creatures, uh, tons of guard creatures, and um, Ice Storm. Okay, I, I misspoke. Turns out I'm just dumb. <laughs> Alright, Wild Beast Color, give me that Swamp Leviathan action. Alright. I'll take more cats. <laughs> I love cats. Thank you, I think so too. Very kind of you, Ninja. And let's give our opponent a shout out here. I mean, like, Ninja Person is a very, very wonderfully 21st century way of describing a ninja, you know. Neither male nor female, just, just solid ninja. And what do we got next? Not playing around Ice Storm, by the way. I mean, I wouldn't say that's a mistake. Um, you can't really expect anything in Arena except common cards, and Ice Storm being a epic is not one that you should be super concerned about. Maybe I should have seen what was happening when my opponent didn't attack uh, or didn't play anything else the previous turn. That should have been a tip-off, perhaps. But I'm satisfied with my decision. Okay. So I either lay down the Tiger or the Hive Defender and the Cut Purse. I think we want to be the more aggressive player right now. So Leaf Lurker would be pretty bad for us. Uh, another Ice Storm wouldn't be awful. We need to keep our angry crab defender fella, guard guy. <coughs> we have two uh, pretty good removal sp options in hand for next turn. Um, yeah. Wild Beast Caller really bringing it. I kind of want to experiment with this card actually in Constructed. Looks like my opponent might just be playing out their hand. And they are. They're just conceding. So. Cool. That was another game with the Monk Draft deck. OK. 
Okay, we're up to four wins, I think, now. Cool. Well, let's play one more game. See what we can get done here. Strategy KB just came online. Uh, he has a YouTube channel I would recommend to anybody interested in more Legends content check out. Yeah. Many orcs get stronger when you have other orcs. Good news. I kind of want to, I mean, I've been trying to build a warrior deck using purple ramp cards and um, Vigilant Giant as a ramp target, uh, Rothgar Forge, I mean, you know the deck, right? You've thought about it, at least. And I just cannot make it work, so if any of you have a good warrior list, a control warrior or ramp warrior uh, list that's been successful for you, I'd really love to see it. Um, I'm trying to make something... Work hap something happened in those colors myself, and I've just not been able to do it yet. Also, uh, I did just upload a uh, a very special video <laughs> where I, I kill somebody with the Wisp Mother Relentless Raiders jank pile. Uh, I didn't get the full combo off, so unfortunately there's not going to be any of that action, but... If you're looking for something a little different than what I'm usually posting, I just got out of the shower maybe half an hour earlier and um, was sitting around playing on casual, trying to make Wisp Mother deck work, and uh, looked like I was going to get there and started recording. So uh, we'll keep Legionnaire and hope for a one or two drop. Shadow Shift. Per perhaps I should have been more specific. <laughs> a one or two cost creature. But we got a nice curve here, especially with our opponent not playing anything. Once again, playing Assassin. We will go with the Cut Purse. Uh, I wouldn't ordinarily... I would go with the card that had the three toughness, but I can Shadow Shift it out of the way and then play Kavach Soldier or play Kavach Soldier or play... I mean, I got so many options next turn that unless he just straight removes it, I think we're good. And uh, it looks like he's going to give me the full... This is actually almost exactly how the last game started, so... Good times. Is it going to happen again? Another removal spell. Lightning bolt. Is this not exactly how the other game started? I'm I, like, is there a glitch in the matrix? Like, what is happening? I feel like there's a uh, a tier list or something like that out there that people are using to build these decks. Um. Hmm. 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 Well, the only two-card combo we can play is not particularly exciting. Uh, Kavash Soldier into a non-triggered Feasting Vulture. So, we'll play the uh, Hive Defender. Not wasting the Shadow Shift, by the way. But we'll play the Hive Defender. Hopefully, he doesn't swing. I mean, if he swings and Lightning Bolts it, I think we're okay with that trade too. But. Hopefully he doesn't swing, so we can swing, drop our Vulture next turn, and uh, see what else we want to do then. Three Assassin decks in a row, though. That's, that's exciting. I did say on Tiny Grimes' podcast about a month ago, though, that I thought Assassin was one of the best color combinations you could draft in Arena. It was true then, and it's true now. Okay. Well. Do, do, do. Um. Gosh. I think we just have to hope there's no removal spell. Uh, I mean, is, although, is that too greedy, right? To drop this and this? Maybe we should just drop this and this. Just play it as safe as possible. I don't want that thing getting out of hand. Our removal is sort of at a premium. We went, uh, well, we went. We're in Monk, so our removal is in the form of uh, guard creatures for the most part. It's a hell of a card, though, against an opponent who can't run Firebolt. Deshaun Avenger, Brutal Ashlander, and does he swing? He does. Does he know we have a Vulture? Why the utter betrayal? 
Alright, let's push some damage. Um, uh oh. <laughs> what do we got here? Darren Cutpress. Okie dokie. Uh, well. Can we, I mean, do we think we can win the race? Because we could just shadow shift this guy over here. No, we don't want to do that. We will... Yeah, let's just clog things up for him. <clears throat> Poor Feasting Vulture. It seems like I've always got something better to do than trigger you. You majestic, majestic bird. Grasping Yorick there. I'll IRF Grasping Yorick. My apologies, Shakespearean uh, aficionados. <laughs> Brutal Ashlander. I don't think Brutal Ashlander is bad for the game, but God, it's a f it is a feel-bad card in my opinion. You know, I'm as in control of the cards I draw, relatively speaking. I mean, and granted, I did put them there, but there are 50 of them in Constructed. As I am, you know, in what the uh, Brutal Ashlander hits when it triggers. You know, there's some modicum of control, but not a lot. But I have to say, I am just super saddened every time that... Uh, every time that Brutal Ashlander does me dirty like that. Oh my god, we're getting all the value we wanted. <laughs> Oh no, that was like one of our three spells. Alright. And... Yep. And yep. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Shocking Whamasu, by the way, also just got nerfed. Um, can no longer deal damage to players' faces. This was a meta-defining card and constructed, so I totally understand the need to change it. I mean, I, it's an arena change, you know, it's it's for arena balance. And I have to say, I'm actually super happy that Dire Wolf is interested in balancing arena. The fact that they're concerned about that sort of thing is just like this the small change they made to Manticora. The sort of thing that really gives me confidence going forward playing this game. Alrighty. Waiting on my opponent to come up with a move here. I trimmed my beard yesterday, and I feel a little bit like Samson. A little weakened, physically and spiritually. Dune Smuggler. Oh no, my opponent's using my tricks against me. My tricks, uh, yeah, could be because they are my tricks, right? Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad that my opponent is an officer and a gentleman and decided to take a sweet time making those plays. Uh, we are going to race. Twenty-nine. Uh, we have eleven over there in that lane. Obviously, he could have a whole bunch of answers, but I like our odds. And we swung face instead of trading in here, because if he has a, a spell that for one is going to do one damage to this guy, it was going to do it whether or not we let this thing live. And uh, this gives us a kill if nothing goes terribly wrong. Although my opponent is acting with the deliberation of a man who has an answer to my situation. <laughs> like that. Okay. And there's the Shrieking Harpy. I'm surprised he wasn't slow rolling it, though, like he was earlier. I mean, it's such a respectable move. So we'll leave our frenzied Witchman in hand as a sort of surprise. Well, we might have made a mistake pushing that damage. 
Our opponent's name is Daziki Dazik. I am DeJustin. De Justin. I'm taking his time again, so he's either got a great play or he has no play. Or this is just kind of how he rolls in life. Yep. Yep. Looks like racing our opponent might have been a mistake. You know, Winter's Grasp right here might just end the game for us. Okay. Again with the slow, respectful plays. Ooh. Okay. Well, seems to me that our opponent might have made a mistake, but I don't know what the cards in their hand are. You don't see a lot of hidden trail. Yep. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, any removal spell kills us. We'll see what happens. Does he have the removal spell or the charge creature? He does. Pre wow, so that's getting nerfed tomorrow or something like that? Okay. Well, we got to respect our opponent's good sportsmanship and uh, in the way they timed their turns. So they obviously deserve to win that one. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, guys. That was another three games with our uh, Monk deck. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will finish this run up probably tomorrow. Got to watch Survivor tonight. <laughs> Have a good one.